This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. It is 5 o'clock here on your Friday, and good morning to you. I'm Lauren Casey. Here's what's making headlines on this May 8th. No one's above the law, and I think we need to show that right now. Demonstrators demanding answers after two deadly police shootings in Indianapolis, their message to investigators, and what police are saying about the investigation. As more businesses reopen, more people will be returning to work during the coronavirus outbreak. What government officials say you need to do if you feel concerned for your safety. And RTV6 is partnering up with Tour de Cure to raise awareness for diabetes. But this year's event will look a little bit different, how they are encouraging people to get outside and bike virtually. But first, we do need to get a check of your Storm Team 6 forecast. Todd Clausen is standing by from home on this Friday. And Todd, you don't have the best news as we're heading into the weekend. <laughs> what can we expect this morning? Yeah, you know, Saturday's cold to start and then we have some sunshine some Sunday we bring some showers in this morning we have showers so yeah really this whole week hasn't been the best forecast yesterday wasn't terrible live storm team six radar doesn't show a whole lot in the way of rain activity as of right now uh, but there are a few locations where we are dealing with some scattered showers already this morning streaming through Bloomington's one of those and you see a lot of green on the map here across the state not all of this is reaching the ground you really have to look into some of these uh, darker shades of green green uh, to find where the actual rain is making it to the ground and that's up towards Kokomo and then in some of these darker shades of green from Bloomington down towards the Bedford area. We're missing out on the heaviest of the rain that is staying down to our south. Temperatures are in the 50s this morning and these temperatures will hold pretty steady throughout most of the day and then once we get to this evening that's when the temperatures are really going to start to tumble. That's when the freeze warning goes into effect. We'll talk more about that coming up. Lauren in just a few minutes. All right, Todd, thank you so much. Let's plan out your Friday commute. Here's a look in the downtown area, I-65 and I-70 at the South Split. You can see traffic here still pretty quiet this morning. You may have to deal with those wet roads as they're heading out for your commute, but it shouldn't slow you down too much. No crashes to report around the metro area at this early hour. The community demanding answers after two deadly shootings involving Indianapolis police. The incidents attracting national attention and protests in the streets. Yesterday, some Indianapolis residents Residents marched through the streets and protested for nearly 12 hours in honor of Drayshawn Reed, a 21-year-old who was shot and killed by police Wednesday evening. Our Kelsey Anderson is joining us live this morning with their message. Kelsey, good morning. Hey, good morning, Lauren. So we are right now at 62nd in Michigan. And as you can see right here, flames are still flickering in honor of Deshaun, of Dijon Reed. Um, after protesters were out here for more than 12 hours yesterday, blocking traffic and demanding action. Take a look at this video of our cameras. We're here yesterday as dozens of people came together for an organized rally. We spoke to D Ross, the organizer of the rally, and he says the family asked him to do this to make sure what the world watched live on the internet does not get forgotten or go unpunished. But I know that they want justice. Uh, they they do want the f officer to be fired, and uh, they want him convicted uh, of, of, of murder. Ross says seeing the community come together and being united in a peaceful way is something he won't soon forget. Now, yesterday, we also spoke to Reed's father, and he says he wants someone to be held accountable, and he's also hoping that this will have this will incident will have changes to the way the system is currently ran. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. Kelsey, thank you. Now, many details about what led up to that shooting are still under investigation, but here's what we know right now from police. IMPD Detective Chief Kendall Adams says that he and Chief Randall Taylor are following a car onto Michigan Road as it sped and ran stoplights. They eventually stood down after another officer got involved. Detectives say the suspect, Reed, jumped out of the car at 62nd Street and ran away. They say he did not listen to commands to stop. The officers tried to use the officer tried to use his taser and then exchanged gunfire with Reed who was hit and killed. Chief Taylor says he understands the community's anger and frustration. I can promise you that we will we'll run a fair investigation. I always want to listen to family members and their concern. I don't have all the answers right now. Uh, I hope to get them as the investigation goes, but I, I can promise the community that we will be transparent. 
Police say that a gun found near Reed's body, they found a gun rather, near Reed's body. IMPD does not have body cameras or dash cameras. Police are investigating a Facebook Live video Reed recorded on his phone during the incident. RTV6 is choosing not to air that video that went viral on Facebook since it shows elements of the incident that are still under investigation. We are also learning more about the second deadly officer involved shooting. RTV6 first told you about the incident yesterday right here in Good Morning Indiana. Metro Police called were called out to this burglar here, burglary here on Wood Glen Drive. This is on the north side when they say a man started shooting at them as they arrived. Officers shot and killed the man, identified as 19-year-old Mikhail Rose. Investigators believe that Rose himself called 911 and may have planned to ambush those officers. No one else was hurt. And Indianapolis Mayor Joe Hogshead released a statement about the shootings that reads in part, quote, Our city experienced a series of tragedies that raise understandable questions and once again reveal the scars of mistrust left behind by a national legacy of discrimination against communities of color. As these incidents are investigated and reviewed by the Marion County Prosecutor's Office, we are committed to ensuring that these processes are transparent and that information is released as it becomes available. It is 5.06. Now I want to get to the latest on the coronavirus. Indiana has confirmed more than 22,000 cases of COVID-19 across the state. The state health department reports 650 new cases and 31 new deaths. Nearly 1,300 Hoosiers have died because of the virus. More than 124,000 Hoosiers have been tested so far. As most of Indiana begins to ease stay-at-home orders, more people are going back to work. Some employees are worried about their safety in this new normal. State officials say they are committed to investing investigating any concerns. Businesses have a general duty clause, which they need to provide a safe working environment. And so that is Indiana law. That is something they're supposed to be providing. To the extent there are complaints in that regard, they go to IOSHA, and IOSHA has the ability to look into those. Well, IOSHA is the Indiana Occupational Safety Health Administration. It's created a specific COVID-19 complaint form for workers. You can find a link by searching our website. That's the IndyChannel.com. At 5.07, the Tyson plant up in Logansport is back open after closing for two weeks due to hundreds of coronavirus cases. However, not all workers reported back to work. One of them, Greg Whitehouse, tells RTV6 he's not going back because he's scared he could catch COVID-19 and pass it along to family members. They say the ones that get affected the worst are the elderly and the children. Well, I'm around elderly people. I'm around children every day. And I'm going to be 50 next year. So it, it's, not, it's not worth it. Greg tells us more about the situation he says workers are facing at Logansport plant tonight on RTV6 News at 11. More safety precautions are being taken for airport security workers. TSA officials will now be required to wear masks to minimize the spread of COVID-19, especially since security workers are not always able to social distance. Some may also wear protective eyewear. Passengers are encouraged to wear masks, though they may be asked to temporarily lower them for identification purposes. TSA says it's working to find more ways to limit physical interactions at those security checkpoints. At 508, hundreds of thousands of Hoosiers are managing diabetes on a daily basis. The American Diabetes Association's Indiana Tour de Cure is one of the biggest fundraisers and ways to raise awareness about this disease. This morning, our Alyssa Donovan has the details on how this event is going to be a little different this year. Alyssa. Due to COVID-19 and recommended social distancing, the annual Indiana Tour de Cure is going virtual. The American Diabetes Association will still be holding the event, but everyone is encouraged to make it their own. Everyone can come out into their own neighborhoods, pick their own route. They can walk, run, or ride. More than 700,000 Hoosiers are living with diabetes. Experts are worried those numbers will rise due to the pandemic. We're really concerned that with everyone staying home, uh, working from home, um, we're worried that when we come out of this, we'll have even more people with pre-diabetes just due to improper nutrition and not having physical activity as we normally would. That's why they're encouraging anyone and everyone to participate in the Tour de Cure. You can register online for free to participate and donate to the cause. Participants are encouraged to share their journey, whether they walk, run, or ride on social media. In the past, the Indiana Tour de Cure has raised around $500,000 for the American Diabetes Association, and that money goes to diabetes research and local programming. They hope that this year they'll be able to beat that number. 
I'm Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. And it'll be a little chilly for that, but the good news is we'll have sunshine in the forecast this morning. Though we are dealing with some rain showers across parts of central Indiana. These rain showers, though, will be very, very light. So if you're thinking about that workout, maybe we could hold off until a little bit later this afternoon. You may be better shape. It's about 60% chance of some showers here through the 8 a.m. hour. And then you notice how quickly they decrease as we progress throughout the course of the day. And here they are streaming through central Indiana. Not all of this is reaching the ground. And if you are seeing the rain, it's all very, very light. Some of the more steady showers down towards the Bloomington and the Bedford area. Highs today will be topping off in the 50s for everybody. It's a cooler day once again. But overnight tonight, the sky's clear. Temperatures tumble, Lauren, and a freeze warning goes into effect. More on the weekend forecast in just a little bit. All right, Todd, thank you so much. Arrests have been made months after Alfmoud Arbery was shot and killed during a jog. Coming up, what we know about the suspects who are now in custody. As the coronavirus continues to impact the country, the case has now been confirmed in the White House. Straight ahead, why this is still impacting the president and what more states are doing to reopen this weekend. It is 5-11 on your Friday. Stick around. We'll be right back. Eight tonight at 9, 8 central on EBC. Welcome back. It is 514. A Georgia father and his son have been arrested and charged with murder in the killing of Ahmoud Arbery. Gregory McMichael and his son Travis were taken into custody last night. The arrest come months after Arbery was killed while jogging in Georgia. The attorneys for Arbery's family releasing a video this week showing a deadly confrontation involving the 25-year-old and two white men in a pickup truck. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation says it will release more information on those arrests in a press conference at 9 o'clock this morning. The Atlanta NAACP is also planning a large rally for later today. More than 75,000 people have died in the United States from the coronavirus, a confirmed case now even reaching the White House. This all as the economic fallout from the virus continues. 33 million filing for unemployment. ABC's Alex Prochet is in Washington with the very latest. We've looked at all of the first case of coronavirus in the West Wing now confirmed. One of the president's personal military valets testing positive. I've had very little uh, contact, personal contact with this gentleman. Uh, know who he is, good person. The service member on a team that brings President Trump lunch and Diet Cokes in the Oval Office. Maybe the president has tested well, negative, but now says he and Vice President Pence will get tested daily for the coronavirus the of the instead of weekly. Meanwhile, parts of the country continue to reopen at their own pace. At least 39 states have already started easing restrictions. At least five more will be reopening by today, but without guidance, even as COVID cases continue to rise in some areas. And we're learning the White House rejected a CDC roadmap that would help businesses reopen safely. One senior official even calling it unnecessary and duplicative. Construction workers back on the clock in Michigan. In Nevada, where COVID-19 cases crushed the tourism industry, restaurants can operate at 50% capacity starting tomorrow. But casinos are still shut down. And this morning, more than two dozen shuttered DMV offices are reopening in California. The state even allowing some malls to open in low-risk counties. We have masks, we have hand sanitizer. But small businesses like Catherine Becker's in downtown Napa are struggling. I don't blame the virus because that's, that's a real thing. I blame how we have reacted. This as more than 33 million Americans have filed for unemployment since March. And up to 10 million people could still be waiting on those stimulus checks. The cover of Time Magazine says more Americans are unemployed than at any other time since the Great Depression, something today's jobs report is expected to confirm. Its damage, J.P. Morgan Chase says, will take 10 to 12 years to recover from. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Well, with businesses reopening, the CDC created a step-by-step -step guidelines on how to stay safe, how to stay sta safe, rather. But according to the CDC official, the Trump administration hasn't made them public yet. The official spoke anonymously with the Associated Press. The CDC advice is aimed at helping educators, business owners, faith leaders, and state and local officials. It was allegedly supposed to be made public last Friday. A White House official listed a few reasons why it wasn't, saying the government is refraining from offering specific guidelines since the coronavirus has affected states differently and that document was still being edited.
At 517, some students in Montana are back in school for in-person learning. Willow Creek School, one teacher, one room schools. It's one of the first in the country to reopen after the coronavirus. The teachers get some closure, the students get closure, we can do some year-end assessments. We actually will figure out what this looks like right now. So coming into the fall, if we still have this as a norm, we're ready. Several small schools in Montana are also opening back up. Education officials there say these schools have less than 100 students and they've come up with comprehensive plans to keep people safe. At 518, it's time to check in on our Friday forecast with Todd Clawson. Hey Todd, what can we expect? Lauren, there's some scattered showers making their way through central Indiana this morning. They're all very, very light. That's the good news, at least going forward in the forecast. We're not going to have to contend with any heavy rainfall or any severe weather for the day today. I'll show you where the showers are the most widespread and the heaviest right now. And that's down towards Bloomington, Bedford, over towards the Nashville area as we slide to the north on Storm Team 6 radar. And you can see just a few sprinkles across parts of Monticello, just north of Frankfurt and over towards the Anderson area as as well. This is part of a quick moving system that's going to stream through here just during the morning hours. Once we get to this afternoon, we are going to get back into the sunshine. So just a little dreary to start. All the real heavy rainfall and the storms are staying down to our south, as you can see from oh near the Paducah, Kentucky area into the Memphis area and points down to the south. So here's how it looks on TrueCast. Hour by hour, some light rain, mainly in just southern locations throughout the morning hours. By 1230, we're breaking the the clouds apart already in northern locales and then by this afternoon everybody is back into the sunshine so it's not an all-day rain it's not a heavy rainfall just a little bit of an inconvenience here this morning now temperatures are sitting in the 40s and 50s these temperatures will go up a couple degrees here throughout the course of uh, the afternoon hours to about 54 to 55 degrees which is still well below where we should be this time of year for temperatures uh, but we do get the sunshine back but the problem is overnight tonight with the clear skies and a new air mass in place ushered in by this storm system that we're dealing with low temperatures go down into the 20s for just about everybody and so everybody will be below freezing there's a freeze warning now in effect from the national weather service so if you have some of the sensitive plants and uh, vegetation outside already you're definitely going to want to either kind of pull those into the garage if they're just in planters and if you can move them uh, if you can't and they're in the ground already definitely cover them up overnight tonight if you want to keep them alive 55 though tomorrow afternoon with lots of sunshine and then as we get into Sunday for Mother's Day we are looking at temperature right around 60 degrees with some scattered showers in the forecast it will not be an all-day rain that is good news for any plans that you may have uh, with mom still chilly on Monday at 53 degrees with partly cloudy skies and then the temperatures start to moderate finally back into the 70s by Thursday of next week and then it looks like Lauren will keep the temperatures fairly mild going into next weekend, but still obviously a lot of days to get through before we get there. All right, Todd, thank you so much. Let's take a look at traffic as you're heading out on the roads this Friday. Here's a look on the west side where things are picking up a little bit. I-465 near Crawfordsville Road. Traffic's moving along smoothly. No delays to slow you down. Some people look to the stars and ask, what if? Our job is to have an answer. Those are the first few words of the first advertisement for the U.S. Space Force. The ad is the first pushing recruits for the new military branch, and it dropped online, and it will also air on TV. The Space Force and recently and was also recently announced it would allow current active duty Air Force members to join this month. Researchers hope studying the immune systems of whales and dolphins could lead to a better understanding of COVID-19. A team of scientists at Mystic Aquarium is in Connecticut is working with Tufts University to develop testing for marine mammals. Researchers say their immune systems are unique, so they may have developed different ways to fight off viruses. Any findings could be useful to human medicine. The study does not use the same tests as people, so no kits are taken from the general public. Despite the pandemic, Nintendo says its profits had surged 41% from a year ago. The company's products have been especially in high demand with people staying inside. The Nintendo Switch has sold on multiple websites and it also has a lot to do with the new lockdown favorite Nintendo's hit game Animal Crossing. The lighthearted game transports users to their own island where they can fish, farm, and befriend a whole host of talking animals. They can even hop on over to other players' islands, a safe way to socialize in a time of social distancing. Well, a group of refugees has made a new invention to help prevent the spread of the coronavirus. 
Coming up, a look at their sanitizing creation using Legos. We'll be right back. Shipped directly from a U.S. warehouse. Well, a group of refugees are turning a popular children's toy into an automatic hand sanitizer dispenser. Syrian refugees designed this contraption from Legos. The prototype was created at an innovation lab in Jordan. It automatically dispenses hand sanitizer so people don't have to touch the bottle. The inventor says he built it to contribute to the global fight against the coronavirus and showcase the talents of refugees. The Lego dispenser even tells you a good job after you've cleaned your hands. That's pretty cool, Todd. All right, as people are heading out, for the weekend. What can they expect in their Friday forecast? You know, there's some showers out there this morning, Lauren, but the timing of these is pretty good. And most people are just getting their day going and they're not walking out the door right now with not everybody having to go to work. And these showers are streaming through uh, very, very quickly and they'll be gone by midday and then we're back into the sunshine. So you just gotta be a little patient this morning for these showers to make their way through the area. They're all going to be very, very light. That is the good news. And then by this afternoon, we are looking at temperatures that'll be topping off right around 54 degrees. And once we get into the sunshine, though, uh, we will see those temperatures get about to 54 for your afternoon highs. So just deal with some rain showers this morning, sunshine this afternoon. More on the weekend forecast coming up in a little bit. Weekdays from 6 to 10 a.m. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Recognize and sadden that this mutual trust we so value has been eroded over the last 24 hours. Now at 5.30 on Good Morning Indiana, IMPD Chief Randall Taylor responding to multiple deadly incidents all involving IMPD officers. What he's promising from the department. And RTV6 is partnering with Tour de Cure this year to help raise awareness for diabetes. How you can participate in this annual bike ride while still maintaining social distancing practices. But before we get to our top story today, we want to thank you for joining us here on Good Morning Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey and Todd Klaus is standing by from home with a check of our Storm Team 6 forecast. Todd, good morning to you. A little bit of rain out there in the early morning hours right now. Yeah, you know, it's wet in some areas, Lauren. The good news is all this rain is just very, very light, and we only deal with it through the first half of the day. By the time we get to later on this afternoon, we are going to be back into the sunshine. Here's a live look at Storm Team 6 radar. And some of the heavier showers are making their way through the Bloomington area right now, and then there's a little band of heavier rainfall, which is kind of the last hurrah for the rain up towards Lafayette if you live in that area. So you're dealing with some light rain showers right now across most of the area. They stream through very, very, very quickly because as we expand out, you can see that the heaviest of the rain is now getting ready to push towards the Memphis area. That's all diving down to our south. We do not have to worry about that at all throughout the day today. And Chicago is already starting to see even the clouds move out. And that's what happens here as well. So morning showers, afternoon sunshine, a high today, right around 54 degrees. More on the weekend forecast for you, Lauren, coming up in just a little bit. All right, Todd, thank you so much. As folks are heading out on the roads to kick off their Friday work day, they shouldn't run into any problems in terms of crashes. This is a live look right now at I-465, just a little south of I-74 there to the southeast. You can see traffic is moving along smoothly in all directions. No delays to slow you down. Revolution must be now. Revolution must be now. Revolution must be now. Revolution must be now. Multiple deadly police incidents in a span of around seven hours. One case attracting national headlines and protests in the streets. Yesterday, some Indianapolis residents marched through the streets and protested for nearly 12 hours in honor of Drayshawn Reed, the 21-year-old who was shot and killed by police Wednesday evening. And our Kelsey Anderson is joining us live this morning with their message. Kelsey. Hey, good morning, Lauren. So we are here at 62nd in Michigan, where you can see behind me, there are still candles lit in honor of Drayshawn Reed, who again was shot and killed by police on Wednesday around this area at 62nd in Michigan. People were rallying yesterday, blocking traffic and demanding action. Our cameras were rolling as dozens of people came together for an organized rally. They, some people started here at 62nd in Michigan. Other people are in walking downtown near the city county building. We spoke to D Ross, a community leader and he says the family asked him to organize this to make sure what the world watched live on the internet does not get forgotten or go unpunished. Never in my history have I ever seen such a thing. 
such a beautiful thing where we was able to come together in a nonviolent way, in a peaceful way, and make sure our voices were being heard. Yesterday, we spoke to Reed's father, and he says he wants to see justice be served for his son. Now, the family also hopes that this incident leads to systemic changes. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. Kelsey, thank you. Many details about what led up to the shooting are still under investigation this morning, but here's what we know right now, according to police. IMPD Deputy Chief Kendall Adams says that he and Chief Randall Taylor followed a car onto Michigan Road as it sped and ran stoplights. They eventually stood down after another officer got involved. Detectives say that Reed then jumped out of the car at 62nd Street and ran away. According to the report, the officer tried to use his taser, then exchanged gunfire with Reed. Chief Taylor says he understands the community's anger and frustration about this incident. I don't have words this morning that will heal the wounds left behind by last night. I won't even try. I know that too many in the community say talk is cheap. Actions speak louder than words. So that is my commitment to the city. It is my commitment to the mayor this morning. We will act. We will act with transparency. We will act with fairness. We will act with compassion. We will act to live out the oath that we all swore to protect and serve Indianapolis. Chief Taylor also addressed an inappropriate comment that was heard on the video made by a detective at the scene. Taylor called the comments, quote, unacceptable and unbecoming of our police department. He went on to say the officer would be facing immediate disciplinary action. At 535, the other deadly police shooting involving uh, other police involved shooting rather happened just hours later. This is in a separate non-related incident. Police are now saying they believe officers were set up for an ambush. This happened around 1.30 Thursday morning when officers were called to a burglary on Wood Glen Drive near 79th and Township Line Road on the north side. As soon as they arrived, officers say that a man immediately started shooting a rifle at them. Officers shot and killed that man, identified as 19-year-old Mikhail Rose. Investigators believe that Rose himself called 911 and may have planned to ambush the officer officers, no one else was hurt. Moving now to the impact of the coronavirus and it's having on our Hoosier lives. The Indiana Department of Health confirming 31 new COVID-19 deaths on Thursday. That means the coronavirus has now killed 1,295 Hoosiers. There are also uh, 119 probable COVID-19 related deaths. Health officials are also reporting 650 new COVID-19 cases. 22,503 people here in the state of Indiana have been diagnosed with the virus so far and 124 1,782 people have been tested for the coronavirus. State health leaders say they expect the number of cases to go up as the economy reopens. And at 536, the coronavirus continues to take its toll on the Hoosier economy. While the number of unemployment insurance claims in the state is declining, it's still higher than days before COVID-19. About 44,000 unemployment insurance claims were filed in the last week. That's the lowest since the pandemic began back in mid-March. It's still far greater than the pre-pandemic total of about 2,000 claims per week. Department of Workforce Development Fred Payne says his office is still seeing an increase in calls because of the high unemployment numbers. So when we look at our call center, our volume is still high, more than 1.3 million call interactions uh, in the month of April. So far in the month of May, we've had about 153,000. Uh, our wait time is still high and our callback efficiency uh, is, is improving. Payne also said so far they've paid out nearly a billion dollars in state and federal unemployment benefits since the beginning of April. Nationally, today's job report is expected to be historically bad. The White House says the jobless rate could reach levels not seen since the Great Depression. This as the country continues to figure out how to reopen the economy safely without spreading the coronavirus even more. John Lawrence has more. Millions of Americans are out of work trying to cope with financial woes caused by COVID-19. We haven't gotten a paycheck in six weeks. We haven't gotten unemployment. What are we supposed to do? Marcia Miller, the owner of Headlines Salon and Spa in California, reopened her business when local, but not state, stay-at-home restrictions were lifted. Shelley Luther, a salon owner in Texas, was jailed for violating a similar order. She was released one day later, and the governor has now banned such detentions. I just want to thank all of you who I just barely met, and now you're all my friends. 
You mean so much to me, and this would have been nothing without you. Just over 20% of American workers have filed for first-time unemployment benefits since the middle of March. The U.S. is facing a challenge. How do you let people go back to work and not risk the coronavirus spreading even more? People are talking about we should reopen the economy. It's more important than public health. Or public health is more important than the economy. Some analysts say a combination is what's needed for the country to start a rebound. If we can contain the problem so that we know that the vast majority of Americans feel safe, they will start spending money and the economy will come back. I'm John Lawrence reporting. At 5.39, a senior CDC official says the White House won't implement the agency's draft recommendation for reopening America. A 17-page document detailed suggestions on how to safely reopen beyond the guidelines issued last month. A new guidance specific included suggestions for schools and churches. An administration official says CDC leadership hadn't seen the document before it was leaked, and the White House task force members decided the draft was too specific given the different situations in each state. A plan to bring boiler makers back to West Lafayette is taking a giant leap forward this morning. The Purdue University Board of Trustees approved the measure Thursday. It includes reducing the number of people in campus workspaces by at least one third and offering telework and remote work options. Also, there will be systematic testing for those with and without COVID-19 symptoms, and flu vaccines will now be required for all students, faculty, and staff on campus. The university plans to set aside a number of rooms where those who test positive for COVID-19 can quarantine. You can read more about the plan on the RTV6 app. Hundreds of thousands of Hoosiers are managing diabetes on a daily basis. The American Diabetes Association's Indiana Tour to Cure is one of the biggest fundraisers in ways to raise awareness about this disease. Our Alyssa Donovan has the details this morning on how this event is going to look a little different this year. Alyssa. Due to COVID-19 and recommended social distancing, the annual Indiana Tour to Cure is going virtual. The American Diabetes Association will still be holding the event, but everyone is encouraged to make it their own. Everyone can come out into their own neighborhoods, pick their own route. They can walk, run, or ride. More than 700,000 Hoosiers are living with diabetes. Experts are worried those numbers will rise due to the pandemic. We're really concerned that with everyone staying home, uh, working from home, um, we're worried that when we come out of this, we'll have even more people with pre-diabetes just due to improper nutrition and not having physical activity as we normally would. That's why they're encouraging anyone and everyone to participate in the Tour to Cure. You can register online for free to participate and donate to the cause. Participants are encouraged to share their journey, whether they walk, run, or ride on social media. In the past, the Indiana Tour de Cure has raised around $500,000 for the American Diabetes Association, and that money goes to diabetes research and local programming. They hope that this year, they'll be able to beat that number. I'm Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. All right, thank you, Alyssa. Always a good event and also a great cause, obviously. All right, outside right now, we're dealing with some rain showers that may impact you. Exercise in a little bit. Here's the good news. The rainfall intensity this morning is just very, very light. So you don't really have to worry about any heavy rainfall as these showers start to make their way through the area. You see the heaviest of the rain is pushing into the Paducah, Kentucky area. We're just going to be on the north side of the system as it makes its way through. So our showers here are just very, very light. And and they're going to be pretty scattered in nature. We're never going to get into a steady rainfall. So the coverage today is scattered. The time frame again is just this morning. And by this afternoon, we'll get the sunshine out. But then we'll focus our uh, focus our thoughts and our looking ahead to, to temperatures as they really start to tumble across the area. More on that for you, Lauren, coming up in just a little bit. All right, Todd, thank you so much. A study of a new drug President Trump touted as a possible cure for COVID-19 shows it may not work as well as one's thought straight ahead why some doctors are now advising against using the drug. And it's been about two months now since live sports were canceled across the country. Coming up with some fans say they're willing to give up to be able to watch their favorite teams play again. Time right now is 542. Stick around. We'll be right back. Nature inspired, planet conscious. 
Welcome back. The Justice Department is dropping the criminal case against President Trump's first national security advisor, Michael Flynn. In 2017, Flynn pleaded guilty to lying to the FBI about his contacts with Russia. But in January, he asked to withdraw his plea, setting the government's, quote, bad faith and vindictiveness and breach of plea agreement. On Thursday, federal prosecutors asked the judge to dismiss Flynn's case. In the filing, the DOJ also said it can't prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Flynn lied or that if he did, the lies were substantial. The court must still formally approve the DOJ's request. There is some good news to report this morning. So there's been a lot of talk about these giant hornets known as murder hornets making their way into the United States. Well, scientists say that despite the name, there's nothing that you need to worry about right now. That's because cases of giant bug attacking humans, it's really rare. In fact, agriculturalists in Washington state where they were spotted say they want to drop the murder title and refer to them by their original name, Asian giant hornets. CDC says the real threat is to honeybee hives, which can be totally wiped out by the giant hornet. At 547, we want to check in with Todd Clausen from home right now and what we can expect in our Friday forecast and also look ahead to the weekend. Hey, Todd. Yeah, Lauren, as we look ahead, last weekend it was so nice with all the sunshine and the warm temperatures. This weekend, really the complete opposite. We're going to be well below normal. Average high is 70 degrees, and it's going to be a struggle to get back to 60 degrees, really, until the middle to end of a next week. So there are, there's a lot of cool temperatures heading our way. As far as the rainfall goes, we've been dealing with these rain showers across the southern portions of the area. That's where the heaviest of the rain has been. Bedford over towards uh, the Columbus area, and then as we slide to the north, you notice it's just a few hit or miss light rain showers moving through the area. So the further north you are from Indianapolis, the less in the way of rainfall. The further south you are, you'll deal with the showers being a little more widespread this morning, but the heavy rainfall all way down to our south, and you notice the direction that this is all going. It's going off towards the south and east. That will not impact us, and you look up towards the Chicago area, and the skies here are already starting to clear. And that's what's going to be heading our way pretty quickly throughout the course of the day today. By 9 30, 10 o'clock, the rain is basically out of here. By 1 o'clock, the sun is shining across most of the northern portion of the state. And then eventually, you in southern locations get into the sunshine as well by 4, 5 o'clock this evening. Rainfall totals won't be all that impressive. Uh, so there's not going to be any heavy rainfall, no potential for flooding or anything like that. Temperatures in the 40s and 50s this morning. Morning. Temperatures will struggle to warm throughout the day today. Uh, we're not going to see a whole lot of warming take place. In fact, we only go up a couple degrees to about 55 degrees for your afternoon high, and that's even with the sunshine working in. That's because we'll get into a northwesterly breeze. Sunset this evening is at 847. I point that out because once with the sun sets, the temperatures drop quickly. We're into the 30s already by 10 p.m. Tomorrow morning temperatures will be in the 20s all across across the area. Hard freeze will take place in every single county in not only Indiana, but much of Illinois and Ohio is under this freeze warning. So this is a widespread blast of cold air that is heading our way. Once we get into Saturday, mostly sunny skies, a high of 55. So despite the really cold start, we do rebounds with sunshine and the May sun is fairly strong. So it won't feel all that bad out there Saturday afternoon. And then Sunday, about a 30% chance of some scattered showers on Mother's Day with a high temperature that'll be right around 60 degrees. It's still chilly next week until we get to Thursday. That's when we kind of flip this weather pattern, 75 on Thursday, and then we'll carry those seasonable temperatures into next weekend as well. But a whole lot of days before we get there, Lauren. Uh, so let's kind of buckle up and find those jackets. You'll need them here over the next couple of days. All right, Todd, thank you so much. Let's take a look right now at traffic. If you are heading out to work early this Friday, here's a live look on the north east side where traffic's moving along just fine i-465 and i-69 no crashes or delays around the metro area to slow you down at this hour well hydroxychloroquine has been touted as a coronavirus treatment for months now but there's a new study out that's challenging that data shows patients who got the drug didn't fare any better or any worse than the people who didn't get it the study which came out thursday is the largest to date to investigate the drug researchers looked at more than a thousand covid 19 patients in new york over the course of a month they found no evidence hydroxychloroquine helped people survive. They also 
say patients did not have a lower risk of needing a ventilator. The prospect that sports fans will not return to stadiums until 2021 is starting to be a growing possibility, and most say they're in favor of the idea if that means sports will come back sooner. A study by ESPN shows 65% of people were in favor of sports returning even if fans could not be in the stands. Several major sports leagues, including NBA, MLB, and the NHL, have weighed the option of returning with teams playing and residing in localized areas. The IndyCar uh, series announcing Thursday it will begin its season next month with no spectators and limited access to the track. And speaking of sports, the Indianapolis Colts, they're ready to welcome fans back to Lucas Oil Stadium when they can. The NFL releasing its schedule for the 2020 season. And here's a look at the Colts lineup. One, the team will open the season on September 13th. That'll be against the Jaguars in Jacksonville. They then return to Lucas Oil for back-to-back -back home games against the Vikings and the, the Jets. You can find the team's complete schedule right now in the RTV6 mobile app. NFL facilities, they're still under lockdown due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The league has not said publicly whether or not they'll shorten the season but they did leave some room in the schedule to drop games if needed. FedEx driver helps make it a sweet birthday for a little girl up in Hamilton County. Coming up, see the special delivery that he made to help her celebrate. We'll be right back. Call the number on your screen. Well, a FedEx driver is getting international attention after making a special delivery in Fishers. When Judd and Price delivered packages to live Liz Paternoster's house one week ago, he learned that her daughter Emma was turning six years old. Remembering the school birthday parties his sons had at that age, Price couldn't help but think that Emma was missing out on something memorable. So he stopped at Dairy Queen on his lunch break and returned to the home with a sweet gift, ice cream cupcakes for the whole family. Judd says that he hopes his gesture shows that anyone can make a difference. Everybody's gone through a lot of different things. You know, just try to be patient, try to be kind to people. You know, if you see something, don't ask for it to be done. Just do it, you know, uh, out, of, out of your own kindness. We want to send a special thank you to Mr. Price for everything that he did to help make Emma's birthday so special. He really is an angel of kindness, and we are so honored to now have him as a part of our lives. Liz is so touched by the gesture, she tweeted about the story with pictures. Joden's son saw the message and showed his dad. It's been shared hundreds of thousands of times. So a great story from up there in Fishers. I just loved that. All right, Todd, we got to get a check of our forecast. I'm not loving the forecast today or what it looks like this weekend. So go ahead and bring us the bad news. Yeah, you know, we have a couple of cool days ahead for us here across the area once again, Lauren. We just can't flip the switch and get into this consistent spring-like weather. It was the same way back in April as well. We're dealing with some rain showers this morning moving through. Temperatures are currently sitting in the 40s and 50s across the area. This rain, though, is only with us throughout the morning hours. That's the good news. By the time we get to this afternoon, we'll work the sunshine into the forecast. But temperatures, even as we get into that sunshine, remain very chilly. We're only going to be right around 54 degrees for your afternoon high. Freeze warnings go into effect overnight tonight. More on that in the rest of your weekend forecast coming up in the next half hour of Good Morning Indiana, where Raphael joins Lauren and I. Stay with us. We're back in just a couple minutes.